Okay, um, so final talk for the day. Um, afterwards, we're just going to do a closing remark first and surprises. And uh, we'll be off the party as well. But before all of that, we've uh, imported some hacker goodness from the US. But I don't want to introduce him myself because I might screw it up. So I'll rather leave it to the man himself. And uh, yeah, I'll give him a, a warm cape on while he's here. Hello, everyone. Um, it's been his birthday in South Africa just to talk to a lot of you. So just take that. It's not today, but just take that into effect. Should be fine. Hello, everyone. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for being hard for enough to actually stay to the very end is like, uh, and actually make my talk. I, I always like it when that happens and surprise. So, uh, thanks. Uh, we're going to start off with my legal disclaimer. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but I played one on the internet successfully before. Uh, and so, uh, this is my legal disclaimer because during my talk, I'm going to talk about things that are going to probably, you know, go, oh, that's horrible. Why would you do that? It's like, it's like, and it's like, you're a bad man. I'm like, no, remember the kittens. I'm adorable. Okay. It's like, I will not try to steal from you, kill you, or ruin you financially unless you pay me first. There's always a contract. Okay. So when I go and you hear those, like you, you hear some of these stories and you see some of the video. Yeah. I got video of it and stuff. It's like, you just remember the kittens. Uh, title of my talk is perception from a blue tractor to a blue and black dress. Yes, there is sort of a um, message behind it, uh, but it's basically one of perception. Uh, it's like, because we all saw, you know, I, whenever I used to see the little blue tractors, farm tractors, I thought those are adorable. I'm adorable. I love those things. Those are, no, those are the things are very scary. They're anti-tank weapons. Who knew? You know, <laughs> it's like, so it's, it's all about trying to go and show. It's like, oh, this is what we think something is. But you never know when someone can do something else with it. Or when we see something and then we see it every day and we're like, oh, that's what this is for. It's totally harmless. Maybe not so much. Now, also, a big thing that I want to make sure that I address is I got a lot of slack for that. Uh, I have some really good Russian friends, and they are ser sincerely my friends. Uh, and I've been to Moscow. I've been to St. Petersburg. I spoke at a conference in St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, in 2019, it's like there are very good people there and they're very good, uh, wonderful hackers that are committed to doing good. One of my friends is missing because he was protesting in Moscow against the uh, illegal Cuban invasion. And it's like, and but some other hackers were coming to me and I'm like, well, why are you, you know, why are you anti Russian? And I'm like, no, I'm not anti Russian. Russia's a wonderful country. I am anti Putin's illegal invasion, which is destroying his country and the Ukrainian country. That's what I'm against. There's a difference. And I'm not trying to be political. I'm trying to say there are some things that we have to stand up for. It's like when uh, George W. Bush illegally invaded Iraq, and it's like for, you know, the whole lie about the weapons of mass destruction, because, you know, that was a lie and wrongful invasion. So I should know, but it's like, you know, that Putin stuff is wrong. It's like there was a symbol, though, from that. It's like someone threw a shoot. And if you are from, if you know about Arabic culture, it's like in the Middle East, a shoe, just seeing the sole of one's foot is an insult. To throw the shoe, that's more than milkshakes or tomatoes, okay? That's bad. It's like, so it was, it's a big insult. It's that one shoe became the symbol of the unrest that the Iraqis had from, you know, people invading, you know, their country, because it's like attacking Iraq after 9-11 is like, would be like, you know, the U.S. attack, because we attacked Afghanistan and we're like, oh, let, let's take Iraq too. That's like if during World War II, it's if we decided to go, oh, and, and during Pearl Harbor, it's like, well, let's attack Japan and Mexico. You know, it's like, not really. It shouldn't be done. So that she was the symbol. In the 1970s, when women were having to fight for their rights, you know, to be counted as like, you know, a human being, it's like they threw things in the dumpster to show that the equal rights. They never burned it. They never burned balls. They were throwing them in the dumpster along with broom handles and other things that were supposed to be considered feminine. 
But of course, you know, guys being the highest school reporters all concentrated on the brain because uh, of movies. It's like, and it's like, and, and, and that became the symbol of that movement. It's like, and luckily, you know, since the 1970s, that's all been fixed in America, and women are just told, oh, wait, no, sorry. It's like, uh, it's still a dumpster fire there uh, for women. Uh, it's like, but yes, uh, but that became the symbol. And in Iran right now, currently, they are just doing the simple thing of cutting their hair. And it's like in frustration and rebellion. And people realize, like, why are they cutting their hair? It's from all the way from a, a poem from the short, I, I'm not going to mispronounce it, but there's an old poem. It's like it's a tradition from hundreds and hundreds of years where when they go to battle or when they go to protest or when they go to show that they're grooming for war, they will cut their hair. And so they are cutting their hair as their protest against the regime, the unlawful regime that's going on right now in Iran, that is like putting them in just as much jeopardy as Iran puts the rest of the world uh, in jeopardy. So it's those kind of outpouring in those protests. It doesn't matter what country I'm from. It's like, I've got to stand up and say something because if you have a voice, use it. Because a lot of other people don't have one. And so that's what I try to do. Uh, so. That's what it's not. They don't hate Russia. It's like, I hate dictators. Uh, nothing about me. I, I like to ride motorcycles. Uh, I've been on uh, television correcting reporters. Uh, I, it looks like I like screaming at people, but that's actually me giving a talk. Uh, I like to do weird things in weird places. That's me actually skydiving uh, outside of Mossel Bay uh, here in South Africa. And there's me robbing a bank. Uh, and then I love playing No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is an amazing game. It's like Minecraft for old nerds. You should try it out. Uh, so uh, now let's get into the good stuff. Oh, if you want to know more about me, jasonishu.com. If you want to know where I've been, happyadventures.world. Or if you want to read my life journal, diary, uh, Twitter, at Jason Street, while it still exists, uh, or Mastodon, so uh, when it wasn't. So let's get into it. Uh, this talk is a little bit different because I decided it ended on myths. It's like, I wanted to bust a myth, uh, since this is the last talk I'm giving this year. It's like, it's not long year. It's like, so it's like, uh, there's a lot of new content. So I'm going to go over it. It's like, I want to start off with the blue team myth. Okay. Uh, humans are the weak link. That is so much bull crap. So much of the lazy excuse that blue teamers use when a user clicks on a link on the website or a user clicks on an email, they, they're like, well, we're blaming the user. Like, click on the link, stupid user. Click. Stupid information security didn't properly teach their users. It's like, they're not the weakest link, they're the we least invested in. If I and was running a company and I invested in my technology as much as I uh, uh, to protect my people, as much as I invest in people to protect my technology, our company would have a firewall like a PIX, you know, 800 or something like that with a default ACL list with a allow all, right? It's like no logging because, you know, that's just going to clutter up and we don't have a place to actually put the backup for that. So screw that. We don't need that. It's like, and they would have a snort base install with all the signatures running, but that's okay. No one's actually paying attention to it because we have seen a freaking snort install with the basic script running, right? It's like, would that be helpful for your company? No. So you invest money. You work on that. You make sure that you're applying the right technology to protect your company from network and computer-based attacks. But you need to understand that it's evolving. We need to start investing in our people to learn how to protect our technology and then using the technology as a safety net. We've been using technology like it's a wall. It's like, you know, we're going like to build a wall and make the APTs pay for it. Trust me, I know that doesn't work, okay? It's like spoiler alert. It's like we got to stop trying to make it as the one-all defense because when that technology fails, and it will, it's like you're screwed because the human's not prepared to, to, to take over and, and figure out what's going on. It's like, so you need to start showing more and creating more of a way to get people to protect the technology. And when they screw up, and they will, it's like the technology can be the safety net to keep you from being, you know, totally breached. And trust me, it's like, I everybody's like, you know, a lot of red teamers are like, yeah, those blue teamers. Let's talk about how stupid the red teamers are sometimes, okay? 
Uh, because the red team that I hate the most is that they're there to break into systems, exploit what they can, and show the client how they failed in defending against their elite attacks and hacks. It's like, mother, I am so tired of the toxic masculinity in the freaking red teaming industry where it's like they're like, their whole, their whole model of, of, of putting things is from a convicted rapist. It's like who, when he was hit with the, in the face, it's like decided to bite a guy's ear off as his only recourse. Okay. If that's your life coach, you need a new life. Okay, and also he's a plagiarist. He actually plagiarized that saying from uh, a Prussian general who actually used it as a warning for people like the red team. Because it was actually no battle plan ever survives contact with the enemy. That should be a warning for red teamers that when you go into that place, whatever you thought were, you were planning, you're not prepared for what you're going to find. It's like, that's what it was about. But I mean, you know, Mike Tyson is like, you know, I don't think, how do you expect him to get it right? It's like, so we need to stop with this attitude that red teamers are there to break things, that red teamers are there because they're, because they're like the elite rock stars in this industry. Screw that noise. The only reason why the red team exists is to make the blue team better. And if you're not part of the red team and trying to be an advocate for your clients, and you're more concerned about being the adversary, you suck at your job. It's like, so that's what that's about. It's like, so making a lot of beans here. Yeah, <laughs> but straight up, that's what we need to understand. It's like, I'm not trying to be an adversary to my clients. I'm trying to be an advocate. It doesn't matter how well and weak my attacks are. They're not paying for that. No client in history has paid you for that. They're getting that for free every day. <laughs> They're getting you for the report, mother. That's what your job is. It doesn't matter how good your leap hacks are or how well you bust it. If you can't properly train that and talk to that and communicate that to the team and to your clients and to their executives and show them the importance of getting these things fixed, and how they can get those things fixed, you wasted everybody's time. It's like, it doesn't matter how cool it was. It's ineffectual, it's unimportant because there was no actionable items afterwards. That's what we need to start understanding. You were there to make the blue team better. You were there to help verify and, and make sure that the defenses are working the way they wanted them. And if you're not doing that, retire. It's like, uh, so I'm not sorry. I'm a little icy. It's like it's like so. Yeah, yeah I'm just gonna deal with it. This is not. I, I'm going out in a blaze of glory this year, guys. It's like just enjoy the ride, okay? It's like because I ain't done. It's like, and I'm not limited to the red and blue team, okay? Because it's like you know I like colors. Uh, it's like uh, I like to call myself a simulated adversary. Or uh, Sean from a, a podcast that's like in the UK, he said, I'm a security awareness operative. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool because they get secret agent, man, you know, I'm a security awareness operative. It's like, uh, which it sounds a lot better than, you know, it's like, hey, I'm a guy who likes to rob people. So it's like, which is, but that, that, that sounds cool too. Um, but for me, it's about education, not exploitation. I don't use any exploits in any of my attacks and any of my engagements. It's like they're always like popping notepad or just you know doing something that helps educate. I want them to catch me. In every engagement, I promise my client, it is part of our contract, it is part of their understanding that by the third day of the engagement, I will be caught. It's like either by them actually doing a great job, which is the best, it's like, because if you're not rooting for your clients, you need to, you know, reach up, re reorganize your life priorities. You want them to do good. You're there not to break it, but to validate it. So if you validate it, that show that they, they were good and that they caught something, that's still a win. So I want to make sure that I get caught because I want it to be a positive experience for the users. Because I'm not breaking into servers, I'm attacking people. I have never seen an email server get sad because they got popped with NSOA 67. Does it still happen? Yes, today, yes, it still happens. 
It's like, you know, now they're going to like the really hot new sexy thing from 2011, you know, Eternal Blue or something. But still, it's still happening. Okay? But the servers don't get upset for that. But people do. Instead of just giving them all the things to look down on and what they did wrong, I always make sure I give them something to look up to. Something to show that they can try to emulate so they can go up to that point and be like that person. And yes, sometimes I have to try really hard to get caught. It's like, it's sad. It's like, I mean, I've spun around in a chair before. It's like I, I shut down a machine. It's like during business hours and walked it out of the teller before they figured out that I wasn't supposed to be there for the last half hour. <laughs> it's like, but they did. And they were the win. And I wrote their names down. Never write down someone who failed. It's like, I always write down the people who catch me. Because it's not, and I tell them, that after about two minutes, after I've successfully escaped, I go back and I talk to every single person. that I was, That's my job. That's where the work starts. Because that's where the social engineering starts. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, I was a horrible guy and I, I just robbed you. What you did, you shouldn't have done. I was being a bad person. And, oh, yeah, you're not getting those new computers. I lied. I'm, I'm a horrible person. You're good for the kidneys. It's like, but it's like, but yeah, it's, I'm sorry, but this is why this is helping you. Because I'm not here to test you. I'm here to teach you. So, therefore, you didn't lose. You learned. It's like you had a lesson, and that's what it was about. And you show them how you're just trying to teach them, and you weren't trying to, and you make it a positive experience. And that way, you have a very well-educated workforce that is now understands what an attack looks like when it occurs, and they'll be more ready for it. It's like that's how that happens because, and I don't use advanced attacks. It's like I'm not using like you know old days or like that's like you know way above you know my skill level. It's like. Because I always hear, I'm so tired of hearing about APTs. Oh my gosh. It's like, yeah, we got all about an APT. It was this APT that got us. It's like, you know what? APT is what the CEOs tell the shareholders in the public when they get popped by an email, right? It's like, that's what APTs are. APT stands for not advanced, persistent, threat. Ooh, you know, it's chill, scary. It's like, you know, it's like, no. Adequate, efficient. Technique. There, that's APT. <laughs> now we got it. Now we know what it is. It's like, that's what an APT is, okay? I'm not even doing that stuff. I'm just bad. Basic, adorable, destruction. <laughs> that's, okay. that's it. I'm not checking to see if you're compliant. It's like, you know, I call PCI Schrod Schrodinger's uh, compliance because everybody's PCI compliant until they're not. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed all these companies that get popped? They're like, they're a PCI, we're PCI compliant. What? So it's like, you know, it's like, so yeah, so that's really weird. But it's like, no, I don't care about your, 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 your uh, PCI or your HIPAA, HIPPO, HOBO, whatever, your grand beach island, your slump, right? It's Oxley or whatever whole life you want to name a policy after. I don't care. I'm just there to F you up. I'm there to be the worst possible thing to happen to you at the worst possible time in the worst possible way. I'm great at parties, you know? It's like, that's what I'm there for. It's like, I just want to be, I mean, I live by Firefly and Serenity, you know, big box, not in the fire for canceling, but, you know, I just aim to be a bad guy. It's like, you know, it's like, I just want to misbehave. And that's what I do. It's like, I, if I go in there and I see so many people go into their clients and they tell them, it's like, oh, I, uh, we went through the zero day. It's like, we kind of just like, I hope we get this remote shell. We did privilege escalation, which we're able to then pivot into this other network. And it's like, no. And then we got all the secrets. Like, and, then, and then one of our uh, uh, great teamers was like, you know, they went through the skylight and stuff. You know, they were able to circumvent the, the security by overriding the, the, the match uh, machine and stuff, you know, to open. And, and you know what their clients are saying? We're secure. And you're like, what the? I just told you. I'm, yeah, but you were like, Mitchas and y'all like the EPGs. Like, we don't have to worry about that. We're not after, we don't have to worry about nation states. We're just like a donut factory in Des Moines. It's like, why do we have to worry about something like that? And so, therefore, they don't understand the nature of what they really need to protect. Me, I usually go in and I just say, 
I spent less than two hours on Google and came up with this phishing attack and had your CEO click the link. He's the one who hired me to do the phishing engagement. True story. It's like, it's like uh, there was one, it's like where I was like, I walked in to this bank. I had never been there before. And I compromised all the machines and it was bad. And it's like, and, and trust me, you're going to see a video of that later. It's like, that's something you have to take seriously. That is something you have to fix now. People may think that your zero days and stuff are not something that they have to worry about. Trust me, the, the data shows that out, right? It's like, but when you show someone how easy it is and how basic it can be done, that's something they have to take a little bit more seriously. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the, the network side. It's like if I'm going to do focus mostly on just doing physical compromise, but you know, it's like a hacker conference, I've got to do like some, you know, computer stuff, it's like technical stuff. So I'm going to show you guys my recon. Okay. I use I use one of the most elite hacking tools ever developed in this world and stuff, you know, and I use it regularly. It's like, it's, I mean, uh, y'all might want to write down the URL. It's like, it's a great place to go start off when you're doing a recon for an engagement. It's G-O-O-G-L-E dot com. Amazing hacking tool, okay? It's where I only start. Uh, right here, we're going to hack EMY. Uh, if you work for EMY, raise your hand. No, don't raise your hand. I don't care. Uh, it's like, but when I was just started starting out in 2001 or so, it's like, uh, I first got my job here at 2000 in information security because I'm old. Uh, but, uh, 2001, I tried to get a job at Ernst and Young and they didn't want to hire me because it's like I passed everything, even the technical stuff to leave it back then. And, but I didn't have a high school, uh, diploma. It's like, oh, it was a GB, you know, high school dropout. So, and I didn't have any college. So they're like, you're not good enough for us. So I'm petty. So we're gonna have to have okay? Because it might have not. It's like, that's how I remember. So we're gonna go after EY uh, and see if I wanna, I wanna rob their building physically. But how would I do that? I need to find out information about them. Uh, so now I have to find out where they're at. I decided to go after the New York office because I actually went to one of their ex-hacking trainings one time in 2003, and they got really pissed off at me because I found a vulnerability there in this uh, SQL server that was internet-facing that shouldn't have been, but that's another story that they don't allow me to tell. But screw them, again, it's like what happened in New York. So we're gonna go after the New York office, and one of the things that always gets me is how people think perception matters so much. It's like, because you see, Ernst & Young on the building, right? Fancy. It's like Ernst & Young owns that building. That's Ernst & You've seen the Avengers. Tony Stark's got his name on the side of the building. He's not the one collecting rent. He doesn't make sure that the, the, the Starbucks is, is doing all their job or hiring the maintenance crew. Well, he's actually not doing anything now because he's kind of spooked. That's funny. It's like, but still, hashtag too soon. It's like, but still, it's like, he doesn't do any of that. No one does that. They have building management companies that handle that. Ernst & Young thinks security is very important. Building management companies think selling office space is very important. See the disconnect here? So I want to go after the building management company. They're originally titled, you know, it's like five times square, which is where they're located. So it's easy to find them. Uh, and one of the things that I love that they tell me is like some of the things that you don't realize that information you're giving out that can be useful to someone trying to attack somebody. Like telling me where all your employees go to eat. It's like, you know, like, why does that matter? It's just like, that's not really where they go to eat. Oh my gosh, yes, that's exactly where they go to eat because they're good company workers. It's like, of course, they're only going to go somewhere right within like a five, 10 minute radius and stuff, you know, because they want to go be quick and go back to work and stuff, you know, because they're team players. So now you are showing me exactly where I can go to like, you know, set up some, you know, um, malicious act, wireless access points, you know, do some proc smart cloning. It's like, take some pictures, some badges. It's like, if I ever did that, things actually, it's like, uh, but also where to send, uh, from where to send emails from saying, hey, you're a regular customer at our location. Here's a $5 gift coupon and stuff. You know, please feel free to print out this PDF uh, for your $5 uh, coupon. It's like, you know, like, yeah, no one's going to call that. Look, it's $5. I need an extra burrito. It's like I'm printing it, okay? It's like you ask Bob in accounting how quick that works, right? It's like, no, if it's the Bob's or accounting people, uh, let me do it. No. It's like, right? So it's like, that better go right there. But what else does it show you? Oh, 
That's your hotel. Look at all the hotels that are doing. Why is that important? Because that's where all your executives from out of town are staying. And we all know how secure the Wi-Fi is in hotels, right? It's like locked down tight, better than the Pentagon. Ain't saying much. But still, no, it's like not a good thing. It's like, you know, it's like that is not a good place to, to, to be advertising. Um, but you know what else that I loved about this one? Because this one was special for me because, you know, heaven. Uh, they provided the blueprints. Yes. I love, you can tell there's some actual physical red teamers here because they're like, <laughs> yeah, they show me exactly where everything's located. And, and I love the way that they do the highlight. I didn't make it blue and yellow, you know, for the cream. It's like they just did it that way already, so yay. Okay. Um, but it fits to the theme. Um, but one of the things that I loved about it is like this is how they use mind tricks. Like this is their Jedi mind trick. Because you see that highlighted blue area? That's the street level lobby. But they want you to pay attention to that. So they like make it colored. It's like, there's a, screw that noise. It's like that whole blue area should be red because that's like they got security in there. It's like, those guys are mean. They pay them extra to look mean. It's like, they ask questions when you try to walk in and, and go up into rob places. I don't like that. Who likes that? No, it's like, I look at the gray area that they're trying to distract you from in the lower left-hand corner, which actually shows, oh, there's the loading dock. There's the freight elevator. There's the mail room. There's the facilities I need to go to. It's like, it's the same thing in the other areas. Like, oh, there's all the back doors. Right there on the left. Thank you. It's like I have always, when I'm breaking into a high rise, I always, I literally was robbing a place in Boston and literally got the shoe shine guy to get me into the loading dock so I can go right up the freight elevator. The look on the guy who paid us, his face, when he came back from his meeting and found me in his chair was chef's kiss. It was amazing. Uh, but all through the freight elevator. But they didn't stop there. They show you blueprints of all the floors. Now, why is that important? Well, for one thing, it lets me become familiar with the surroundings. And when someone comes and questions you and say, hey, what are you doing here? It's like, oh, I'm going down to the right and set me up by the conference room. It's like an electrical closet doing an audit. And they're like, oh, okay. They're more likely to let you go because why? Because down to the right by the conference center, uh, a conference area, there's an electrical closet. How would you know that unless you've been there? Rocket management company, thank you. It's like, uh, uh, so yeah, that's really great. And you notice how they're still doing the Jedi mind trick thing, right? Look at all that dark area. Here be dragons, don't look here. This is no, nothing to see here, citizens. Uh, but they still want to sell space, so they eventually uncensor it for you, uh, which I thought was adorable. Thank you. Uh, so now you can see a very nice, clear view of where the mail room is and which way you're going to turn from the uh, freight elevator, it's like, uh, to get into the facility. And also bring the restroom far, because like I drink a lot of diet and that's a good place to know, too. Uh, yes, that's perfect. And the one of the scariest things was, I can do this in your lobby. It's like, or at a Panera Bread, you know, having pizza and Diet Pepsi on one of my little mini devices. And I did this other one was I was uh, checking it out. It's like in a hotel room in Stockholm. It's like, and I've got this uh, little bitty computer site so strapped on my side and my little e-holster because, you know, from Texas. Uh, but it's like, and the whole thing is, is because when I'm in those lobbies and I'm in those places with equipment that doesn't look like a computer, it's like, I can start doing research and recon. Lobbies should be just for getting people from the front, registering them, and sending them off. But we put Starbucks there. We put, like, little uh, shops. We put little cafes. And I'm like, thank you so much. Because now I can spend hours just sitting there drinking my mocha latte. No, actually, I'll talk about it. I don't like the mocha latte. But, but it's like, you know, just drinking that and it's like, and just tracking the foot traffic to see what people are wearing, to see what security guards uh, patterns are, how attentive they are. It's like checking all that out while I'm probably running a malicious attack uh, wirelessly as well, because, you know, playing like, you know, I'm bored. It's like, I got ADHD like everybody else in this industry. It's like, so, so yes, so I'm going to be doing things like that. So that was just one of the things you've got to be careful about because you never know. When an attacker is going to show up in your area going like, hmm, what can I do? 
It's like, shiny white, take down. It's like, uh, that, that's their office right down by the waterfront. It's a very beautiful building and their interior. Oh, wait, I, I didn't go into the interior. I don't know anything about the interior. Um, but now let's go and look at some of the social stuff. Um, got, got to hit the socials because, you know, it's like, well, Twitter still exists anyway. we got to keep in them. Uh, but here's it on Instagram. I love the people talking about like how they go in and they can break into a network to do network discovery. You're literally breaking into a network to see what devices are on the network or what kind of technologies they use. Look, have you heard of LinkedIn? Their job posting tells you exactly what technology they have. The people that they currently have hired for positions telling you exactly what firewalls they're using, what antivirus they're using, what office products, what programming languages they're using. They're all telling you that. And then you also have Instagram and stuff, you know, showing you where your employees are and what they're inside their buildings look like as well. And also, ooh, what happened there? Something happened there. Looks like something happened there. It wasn't me. Yeah. Okay. It's like, but they're also showing you what kind of devices. They're using Lenovo uh, laptops uh, for this one company, which is like, uh, ooh, scary right now, right? It's like, still hashtag too soon. Uh, but also they got Dell and some MacBooks and some iPhones, it's like, who doesn't? It's like, so they got all those devices. So you're, you're already knowing what their architecture, what kind of equipment they're using. Um, but one of the other things, the main reason why you use social media, okay, uh, and I mean, and also probably one of the main reasons why security people drink, uh, hashtag, that's why we drink. Hello. I'm still up. Y'all still hear me? Yeah. Okay, right, good. Epic. So I don't care. I'm set up right now. So, well, no, I'm going to just talk about Huh? Huh? Oh, I don't. Uh, he stole it. <laughs> that guy right there with glasses. Look how this needs looking. I said, just show back to Okay, so one of the things that gets me is you look for a hashtag new badge, and you're like a smorgasbord of sorrow because you see all these people posting their badges. And you've got one guy over here. It's like they're actually posting the keys to the building. And you're like, well, why is that a big deal? Look, that, remember when the Department of Homeland Security decided to print all the, uh, show all the TSA keys? Guess who's got all the 3D printed TSA keys? <laughs> Do you really want me having the TSA keys to your luggage? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, and remember, that's the same government, my government, Yay. It's like that wants all your digital keys as well. I'm sure they'll handle it way better than the, the luggage keys, right? Yeah. It's like when confronted by that, the Department of Homeland Security did their, the only thing that they could do logically. Uh, they said, well, that wasn't really meant for security. That was convenient. So we're not going to change the laws because that would cause, you know, effort. Uh, so I'm sure if that something happened to digital keys, they would take responsibility for it. Um, but I digress. Very ranty today. It's like, so let's go and see what else. Because you look at all these badges, and you're like, well, what are you going to do with those, Jason? Well, I'll tell you. It pays people. I've got the Badgy 100. The only way this could be cooler is if it was called the Badgy 3000, okay? That is the only way. Because they're talking from taking a picture off of Instagram to printing a new badge with your name on it, it's like 15 minutes and you're owning it. And I, and I love my detractors because, you know, they're adorable too. And it's like, and, and I love the ones that are like, well, yeah, but Jason, are you, are you using a proximate and like you're cloning it? You're no, I don't put HIV on it. I, I don't do the hit. I don't do, no. I deliberately make sure that it doesn't because I don't need it because I'm going to walk up to the badge reader, and I'm going to be dressed nice, and I'm going to be like, beep, beep, Blue security, hello, I've got a meeting in five minutes, it's like, I need white guy in a suit, hello, <laughs> hey, what's the use of having white privilege if you can't talk about how horrible it is, right, it's like, it. and then you can go open the door for you. It's very nice of them. I really appreciate it. Um, it's like, so, yeah, it's like I don't do the lock picking thing because I'm not that great with it. It's like I usually just get them to open the door. It's much funner. Um, 
Now, I want, I want to ask a question with you. It's like, it's like, do you think where you work is more secure from infiltration and compromise than a bank which understands and is aware that people will try to rob it? Because I, through the years, believe it or not, I've told a few stories during my talks. And if you haven't been one of the people that have gone like, Jason, that is total BS, I'm surprised because that's what I say every time that it happens to me. And I was there. Okay? But I want to talk, and I have a lot of people that talk about, like, how I'm not technical. It's like, I don't know how to program. It's like, I don't know any of the languages. It's like, I'm very handle English, okay? I'm from Texas. It's like, so, no, I don't, I don't do that. It's like, but let's see how effective we can be doing a basic attack, walking in, and see how that goes. And I want y'all to make sure that you're timing and see how long it takes for me to walk into a branch that is currently closed, it's like to getting uh, a compromise and, and compromising the first machine. Let's see how many minutes or hours it takes to do that one. So here we go. We're gonna walk in here and I can't see the thing, so we're not gonna have sound. But look at her, she's amazing. She is the star of this show because she knew I was sketchy AF as soon as I walked in. Did you see the look on her face? She knew I was troubled. Oh, um, by the way, 15 seconds if you're counting how long it took for me to walk in the front door to compromise the first machine, the answer was 15 seconds. Uh, here I am at 20 seconds. The payload is executing. You know, it's like 25 seconds. It's done. And under 30 seconds, I've compromised the first machine in the bank. And then here she comes. Making her coming out of her way to come and stop me and question me. Another amazing thing that everyone should be doing. And of course, I tell her in my assertive roles, I'm doing a USB audit. What's, what's, what's a USB audit? I have no idea, but I do a lot of them, okay? <laughs> Every engagement. And it's like, and I'm not humbling. I'm not showing that I'm, I'm, I've been caught. I'm actually being assertive, going like, I, didn't you talk to headquarters? Didn't you talk to the manager? I'm supposed to be here. And she's like, well, you need to go talk to my manager. Another right thing that you're supposed to do. And I'm like, sure, I'll go talk to management. But here's where she made the one mistake. She goes and gets the tension. And then I assure her that I'll stand by and she can leave. And she thought I was going to be honest. <laughs> so I immediately go in and I switch to a <laughs> passive role and I compromise the management. Because the manager thinks that she had vetted me. She thinks the manager's going to vet me. Well, Bobby vetted me. <laughs> so I'm just, and I'm from Microsoft, I'm trying to make the network faster. Look, you could be on a T13 direct line from fiber to your desktop. You ask someone, hey, is the network running slow? Yeah, I think it is. Just a bit. I'm here to make it faster. What do you need? <laughs> Me, I need network servers, so I have to go and say the data center. <laughs> I'm here to make the network faster, people, a serious business. That's my trusted agent because, once again, it's an educational experience. I don't want to get tackled because I'm fragile my bruise easily, but he's way too close because he can't forget and believe what's going on right now either. Uh, and then I get the manager going, this is from uh, the National Geographic Show. This is an unaired footage that... Darren Kitchen was nice enough to acquire somehow. And so this is all unedited because I don't want you to think I tried to make it look cooler. Uh, so sorry for the butt cam. Um, <laughs> but it's unedited. This is the whole thing. So we get to the data center. It's got a nice uh, secured uh, lock panel that I did not know the pin for. It's like I think it was uh, son's birthday. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't looking because, you know, and then he lets me into it. And I was like, will you let me in here by myself? I'll go get you in a second. And he left me myself. The one thing you can't hear in the audible is the audible sigh of like, because I want them to do well. And it's like, and this is not going good. So, but then I also realized that lady was freaking sharp as a tack. It's like, she may now go talk to the manager, like, who was that guy? So I was like, I need to catch up with him. He's my golden ticket. It's like, so I hurried up to catch up with him. It's like, no, oh, you're staying with me, buddy. It's like, let's get going. Now to behind the teller line. Because having a guy robbing a bank, you know, being escorted by the manager behind the teller line never ends badly for people. 
at least a robber. So, you know. And here I go, start compromising the machines there. That's fun. Now, I have to say, I, I don't mean, I, I try not to lose my cool uh, during the engagement. This one was really hard because I was so upset at the rudeness I experienced here. It's like on this next one. This freaking ungrateful, un, very not nice employee had the audacity to lock his workstation while I'm trying to rob him. How rude. But it's okay. It's okay. I got the manager to go get the employee that was on break to, to come and unlock the computer for me. Uh, so that was good. Okay. It's like, I, uh, I'm so glad I kept my cool because it's like that would have been messy. It's like, mm -hmm. um, yes, I always, because uh, Lebanon, it's like, you know, like most countries around the world, it's like speak more than one language. And I tell people, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm from America. I only speak one language. I'm from Texas. I don't speak it very well. Uh, and so I like to make jokes because it shows that I'm like very affable, just very nice. I'm a nice clobber, okay? It's like, I, I try to be polite. Now we're going to go where the vault is. And if you think that vault is the big shiny place, you are mistaken. This is the vault, and this is the most powerful employee in the bank. This lady right here, you know why? She's doing the wire transfers for the company. Why would I go after a couple thousand dollars in a till when I can get wired, uh, a wire transfer of a couple of million? You know, <coughs> so isn't that way too intimidating right there? That wasn't really intimidating. It was just, you know, just for the effect. But there I go. Just, and I also swore, fell through her back because she was right there in the middle of the wire transfer. I hope I didn't mess it up uh, when I watched Notepad. And I did it graciously. appreciate the help. It's like, oh, I was like, and uh, here's me. But remember one important thing that I, I said about me, because I mean, I'm honest. It's like, you know, uh, when I'm not, you know, being paid not to be, uh, I'm petty. So, of course, I had to go to the one lady who actually stopped me. But this time I had the manager behind me and I had to compromise her machine, too. It's like, I wanted to get 100 percent compromise the whole entire branch. That's my cover story. I'm just petty. It's like, I was just like, you did a really great job, lady. It's like, you did everything right, except for there. And I, and I really, I felt a little bit bad. Not bad enough not to do it. It's like, but I still felt a little bit bad. Uh, and they go like, all done. It's like, see, I was polite. I plugged it back in. And then I go, thank you. Appreciate your help. You know, Thank you. It's like, and this really was actually the honor of what I said, because I was literally like, how the f did that just happen? <laughs> so that is uh, me robbing a bank in eight minutes, uh, 100%. It's like from first compromise for 50 seconds. Uh, how many leap skills did I use during that? What was my you know, skills or magical training that allowed mother, there was none. There was nothing that I did that not one person in here couldn't walk. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> and especially don't get caught saying Jason told me to do it. But there is literally nothing that I did that any of y'all couldn't do. It's like I used a, 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 a bunny script, that I, uh, a ducky script that I got off a hat five and just edited the, the notepad payload in, note, in, in their tool. It's like, and that was it. If I wanted to actually do more of a payload, do more of a I could have done that, but I'm trying to be there as a teacher, not as someone that's testing. So when you hear all these people talking about all these leap skills that they're doing, understand. It's like that may have been years of failures that got them to the point where they can do those things well. It's like there is nothing stopping anyone in here from doing the same kind of thing, okay? It's like I mainly do my job through, you know, I have no shame and bad impulse control. I mean, those are the main qualifiers for my job. It's like, so if you've got that and you're in this industry, there's a good chance you got that. It's like you can do these things. Don't make it like it's somebody, something special or the dark arts. We should be opening up for more people to do the stuff, not trying to limit who can do what and intimidate them thinking that this stuff is something that not everybody can do. 
And we're going to show another one. And this is how, once again, I use people and perception. I'm coming in from the public area. I ignore the tellers at first. But I stand here, the lady on her phone behind me in the bottom. She doesn't see me. But I'm hiding behind this column so the teller people can't see where I'm at. I wait uh, several seconds, and then I walk around from the private terminal. Like I was coming from that lady who was on her phone, and I walk straight into the cover line. And I'm like, I go to the very far end. I say hello. I make sure that they know that I'm initiating contact. One of the best counter social engineering maneuvers you could ever do is going, hey, how you doing? Perfect. Because you're initiating conversation. If you're trying to be a bad guy, you're supposed to be hiding. You're supposed to be avoiding contact. I'm like, hey, I'm over here. What you up to? It's like, no, well, I just robbed your stuff. You know, it's like I, that one machine that I did first wasn't even plugged into a computer, but I was establishing a pattern. So then I go to her computer and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing a USB audit again. And so, now, this other lady, she was working. She ain't having me. Okay. So I do, you know, Classic bank robbery 101, I spin in the chair uh, until I can get a moment for her to, like, you know, let me uh, rob her. Uh, she's still not happy with me, but I'm like, hey, I just want to do one thing, you know, you know, compromise your system. Thank you. It's like, won't take much time. It's like, see, that was painless for me. And, and, see, and, and when it's un, I'm done, she's smiling, I'm smiling, everybody's smiling. It's like, I mean, look, you don't have to be mean to rob people. And then the lady that was on the phone, I go and rob her as well, uh, just because, you know, thorough. Um, and there we go. What made that possible? That column. That is the only thing that made that engagement possible right then and there. I would have had to come in from a totally different way or change my perception and change my attack vector if that column wasn't there. Because when I first walked in, the teller saw me. And they knew I was coming from the outside. They knew I was not trusted because they don't know who I am. They've never seen me before and hopefully never see me again. It's like, and they're like, yeah, that's the moment, you know, he's got here. Yeah, he doesn't supposed to be here. But when I went around that column and I was there for a bit, they're not even thinking it consciously, but they're like, oh, he must be talking to someone over there. I don't see him. And then I'm coming from around the column like I had talked to them. And so they're assuming, oh, he's from the private side now. He's been vetted. It's totally cool. And that it was just that simple. And we don't see that's one of the things I love about being on the spectrum. It's like, especially since I was young, I had to study human nature because normal people scare them out of me. Okay. And so I had to learn what people looked like and how what they were thinking and how they do stuff and stuff. So I can mimic that. And so I could like be that way so I wouldn't be, you know, too scary. It's like, that's the whole point, is being able to look at human nature, the stuff that they don't even realize people do, it's like, and try to make sure that I can capitalize off of it and rob them with it, because, fine. So after all that, we can all assume that your company, I said this all funnily and stuff, you know, it's like, this funnily is a word, look at, don't look it up. It's like, it's, but seriously, I have had a 100% success rate on every engagement I've been in for the last decade. Don't think that these people are stupid. Don't think that these people did something wrong. They didn't know and they weren't trained and that's what I was there for. I wasn't there to test their security. I was there to teach them what an actual attack looks like so their understanding of it. So yes, that was fun to watch, but trust me, that could be anybody's company. It's like they did, some of those people did a really amazing job. It's like, but they made slight mistakes and that was what I was there to show. So they could be educated next time. It wasn't to make fun of them. Because I'm not attacking your network with technology or ODAs again. I'm attacking your people using their perceptions and expectations to get in. That's all what it's that's all most of my job is. Is trying to figure out how I can blend in and look like I belong there when I totally don't belong there. Here's a great example of that. These two pictures were taken 24 hours apart. They're a little bit different, not too different, but they're a little bit different. But what is the big difference in this? I don't have a jacket on. 
Look at, there's snow behind me. I'm from Texas. I am freezing my everything off, right? It is effing cold outside. What kind of crazy person doesn't have a jacket on when they have to walk three city blocks to the place they're supposed to compromise? Well, this kind of crazy person. Because you know why? Once I break in, which, spoiler alert, I did, it's like I'm now walking inside their private area without a jacket. So what does that mean? That means I must have already been there and I already put my jacket somewhere. Because if I would have shown up in the parka that I would like to have worn, that would be really weird coming to your desk and I'm with IT help desk. Like, why do you still have your jacket on? It's like, you know, it's warm in here. That would be odd. But since I didn't have a jacket, without them even thinking about it, I'm assumed to be safe because obviously I put my jacket in my conference room or in my office. Obviously I've been there for a while or I would have a jacket on if I was coming from the outside. So therefore I must be from the inside. It's those simple things that we don't think about that I'm trying to attack and take advantage of. And I use it through my, what I like to call the tackle fashion. I usually, there's only three ways that I'll rob you, okay? It's like I use my assertive role, my passive role, and my what the YOLO, let's see if this works role. It's like uh, we'll get to all of them. Um, because in each one of those pictures, I was robbing people. It's like, and I don't want anybody to think of appropriation because I'm acting like I'm a homeless person. I used to live behind a dumpster and I used to be homeless when I was a teenager. So it's like, I'm actually, that was, uh, I was never that fancy though and dressed that nice uh, or smelled that good. Uh, but I'm using it to hack you because trust me, no one looks at the homeless person. No one pays attention to what's going on. And and who the, would have cardboard used to, you know, take a computer to, to attack people as they're walking by? Okay, so we're going to start off with the assertive role. It doesn't mean aggressive, mostly. Sometimes I've been sort of aggressive, but it was like in the first one where I was being very sort of like, hey, I'm supposed to be here. You need to contact management. I'm, I'm supposed to be here. You should have already talked to headquarters. Um, the mannerisms are, I'm official. I may be a little off-putting. I may be a little upset. I may have jet lag. Always when my children's having a birthday, it's like that I'm missing because I had to fly over here and had to do this audit. So I'm just really, you know, attached. Um, and the hardware, though, is way more limited. I'm only using like a small USB drive or I'm using some kind of small device because I don't want, I want it to fit in with the suit that I'm wearing usually. Um, but the suit that I'm wearing, mother, nice. Okay. This is the business suit of dude. Okay. It's like, Fear it and tremble. Uh, I had, I used, when I was allowed to go to China, a long story, uh, I, one of the best things about it was I had a uh, tailor in Beijing, Peter. Amazing, amazing man. It's like he made all my suits and shirts. And I love it when I was first talking to him about my suit. Because when I was talking about what I wanted to design, he says like, are you a magician? And I'm like, no, Peter, I'm not a magician. You know why you can tell? Because Peter, magicians always say, look, nothing up my sleeve. And Peter, didn't I specifically tell you to put pockets in my sleeves? <laughs> so I could put bash buddies in it? It's like, you're asking, Jason, why do you have bash buddies in your sleeves? Because it's cool. <laughs> Period. That's it. No, I just wanted to be able to show that I had something up my sleeve. That's, I'm 12. Okay? <laughs> so that's what I had that for. And then also, I like to dress fancy in this sort of role, you know? It's like, I think from a poor background, so I'm always trying to be fancy, right? It's like, look at that. Can you see the three hacking devices that are in this picture? I mean, come on, the USB recorder pin is pretty obvious. That watch, believe it or not, it's not a Rolex, okay? It's like, I know you think I'm balling like that, but no. Uh, that's a 16 gig USB hard drive that you can connect to a cable, download 16 gigs a day, which I'm sure wouldn't affect anybody's you know, productivity. Uh, and it's got also a high depth video camera in it. Uh, so that's nice. But the best one is Peter also made all my shirts and he made them all French cuff. And it was like, you want these all French cuffs? Like, yes, Peter, I want to be fancy. 
okay? Because I always thought wearing cufflinks make you fancy. And they do. I'm pretty classy AF and stuff, you know, when I'm wearing my, my, my French cuff shirts, my cool cufflinks. But these cufflinks are the coolest since I can use them to rob you with. Because one of those is a wireless adapter that I plug into your server or CEO's desktop. It's like, it turned into a wireless access point. And don't worry if you're using Mac or Windows or Linux and stuff. Uh, the other uh, cufflink has a two gig USB drive with all the wireless drivers uh, that I can get into the install. And it made me a couple of command and control payloads and some gifts that I'll leave on the server uh, for myself to use as I'm then hacking the rest of the time from the parking lot off my new access point into your internal network. Uh, so fancy AF, right? Uh, here's some other devices. And say, like my, my jacket, as you can tell, it has, sorry, things, but it's got pockets, right? Isn't that amazing? Look at all those pockets. Hey, trust me, I'm right there with you. I don't know what is wrong with the Western culture that women can have pockets and men can't wear purses. I love having purses and like little backpacks. So we got to call them tactical bags now because it makes it sound more manly for us. We love wearing purses too, okay? Uh, so uh, you see all those devices. Guess how many devices in that lineup that I used? Four, maybe five, but it looks cool, don't it? You ever seen those movies where it's got the assassins or the spies and they reveal that hidden wall or picture and it's got all those lines of guns and bazookas and they go like, here, grab this pistol. <laughs> okay, I got it, let's go. I think that's adorable. I love it, right? So I wanted to have a huge, like, these are all the devices that I could attack you with, you know, if I was going to, but I could. Not going to, but scary, right? So yeah, those are a whole bunch of things that you're supposed to be afraid of uh, that I never use. Uh, I use a bash bunny too. I use a uh, the rubber duck. It's like, especially the new one that's like scary good. Uh, Sharp Jack, uh, Wi-Fi pineapple, screen crab, and I use uh, OMG cables, uh, USB C or you know lightning. I, I like. I, I'm not trying. To, I will exploit any operating system equally. Okay. Uh, it's like so. Apple Android. I don't care. It's like uh, your mind. And so the next role is the passive role. Passive role doesn't mean I'm going to be wimpy. It's like, I'm just, look, I'm just trying to do my job. Can you help me out? I'm with the help desk. It's like always coming with the help desk. Never go on an engagement as a plumber unless you know how to plumb, okay? Because you never know when you go into some place and they're like, oh, thank you. Our toys are back up five hours. We called you like, you know, 30 minutes ago. We're so glad you showed up. Oh, Maybe you're right to that, right? I always go into this help desk. I used to be help desk. Once I was at a branch, I was stuck there for over 40 minutes before, irregardless of the engagement, 40 minutes doing tech support. When they got me to try to start working on the printers, I had enough. I was like, I lied to the guy and I said, hey, you know what? I, I didn't want to tell you this, but we're really, I'm here to do an audit because we're, we're retrofitting and outfitting with all new equipment to all the branches. And you're really great. It's like, and so I'm putting you on the list for first it's because you guys are awesome. And then I'll never do that again because when the engagement was over and I had to explain to everybody what was going on, the bank manager, great, this, this wonderful old soul, raised his hand like he was in class. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and he's like, um, but we're, we're still getting the computers and equipment, right? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I lied. I'm a bad guy. Remember, <laughs> it's like it's like. I mean, I brought people in a wheelchair before. It's like I'm a bad person when I'm on the show. Hey, remember the kids, okay? It's like I've already established my moral fiber as someone who is trying to rob you, okay? I don't know why people get upset about what level people are robbing people with guns. It's like I'm trying to do it with a smile. Okay, it's like I got a little bit share. It's like so that's what I'm trying to do. And the tech, the the gear that I use is much more diverse because you know people are. You, and I've literally been on an occasion where I said, "Oh, it's a techie thing or something or other." It's I need to do something. Oh, uh, Wi-Fi scan. They're like, "Okay, sounds cool." That's what a nerd would say. And I'm like, "I am a nerd." It's like I'm not lying about that. 
Uh, this is what I'm usually wearing. I always like to come with warning labels. Uh, yes, that shirt does say Hacker. Yes, I used it to rob a uh, hotel in Malaysia and several other uh, research facilities. And yes, the other shirt does say your company's computer guy, which I robbed a financial institution off the uh, um, in uh, uh, right across the street from Ground Zero in Manhattan. Uh, so, and that is a fake Microsoft badge again because you know I like trolling Microsoft. Thank you guys. Um, and that's the old badge. That is the old Microsoft badge. Don't be trying to come up here and go like, yeah, Jason, but don't they have a new badge? Yes, and I've got a copy of it. But it's not as fun as using the old one and still getting away with it. Okay? <laughs> it's like, because, you know, 12. And here is the clipboard of doom. Notice the theme? It's like, so with the clipboard of doom, it's also got a little select container. It's got some devices. Yes, I've used the bash bunny uh, that says victim on it and had it explained to someone when someone questioned me because I like to come with warning labels. But here is one of the other scariest tools that I've used on my engagements. And I'm not talking about those two awesome OMG cables that are microcomputers disguised as charging cables, which are really, really good at robbing people with. No, I'm talking about the even more intimidating one, the envelopes with the red marker. There is nothing more effective to compromise a company than walking through a secure area Okay, seeing someone's office or cubicle empty, but you can see their name on their little badge inside their door. So you walk on in, grab a malicious USB drive, put it in the envelope, you know, seal it nice and tight, write their name on it, leave it on their desk, and walk away. <laughs> Who the is not going to their desk, seeing an envelope with their name on it and a USB drive on inside the envelope and not plugging that into their computer? <laughs> Horrible. I know. It's like I thought of it myself. I'm so proud. It's like it's diabolical. Uh, kittens. Um, some of the other devices I'm using is like, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi pineapple. I've got the Proxmark card that I've never used, let's be honest. It's like I don't use, I don't plumb cards. It's like, it's cool. And all the cool guys that can do all the really cool, you know, cloning. And it's like, it's like more power to you, but it's like, I just never needed it. It's like, I'm sure eventually when I get to the point where I have to actually, you know, adult for a living, it's like, I'm going to do that, but I doubt it. Uh, and then just some of the other tools that, that I might use in there. One of the things I like is when it says pumped on it, it's for half. It's like, that is a screen crack. It's like, you plug that in to the HDMI, uh, to the, usually the executives, because you know, you're still using CRT or DVI or something, right? It's like, but the executives, they got the HDMI monitors, but because they classed it, right? It's like, so you plug that in, one end goes into the monitor, the other end goes into the computer. It's like from both ends of that device. And what does that do? Oh, it records everything it sees on the screen. Your, your CEOs, I'm sure, are not looking at any kind of emails that may be sensitive or information that they may not want the public to see. Because when it's being broadcasted wirelessly to my computer. It's like uh, in my van in the parking lot. Maybe not a van, because that's like, you know, it's too cliche and scary. It's like, but, you know, my, my Honda Civic, it's like in the, in the parking lot. I'm on a budget. It's like, so now the next one, and I'm embarrassed about how many times I've actually had to use this. Um, this should not be your first choice. But in certain situations, I'm faced with, like, I don't know what kind of pretext is going to get me into this place. And so I'm like, yellow. Let's see if I can fake being a TV producer and break into a financial place in Jamaica. Spoiler alert, the answer is yes. It's like, or break into a hotel as a drunk customer who's barefoot, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pajama bottoms uh, in the south of France. Spoiler alert, that's me after I broke into a uh, palatial hotel in the south of France, barefoot and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pajama bottoms. The best part about it is that picture that you're seeing on the right, that's not from the hotel I robbed. That's the dump they put me in because they couldn't afford to keep me in their hotel for the whole engagement. They can only afford in the off season for me to be there for one night to do the physical part of the engagement. That's how expensive it was. 
It's like it was very exclusive. And it wasn't in cons. It's like, you know, or you know, where like the 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 the, the newbie rich people go. It was like in Jean Tapferat where like, you know, you don't know about because that's where like the, the people have boats on their boats with a helicopter, right? It's like that's the fun stuff. Um that's the dumb to me in. If it was an amazing time, it's like they hate people. Um and I'm only using, you know. Like a small rubber ducky on that. It's like I'm using like the pin video thing. It's like because of the fact it's like I I, I don't know what the situation is going to make it. I've gone in as a tourist. It's like when you're it, when you're definitely going somewhere, especially in Asia. It's like when I broke into places like that. It shame is a very big thing that you should never manipulate people with, but on their part. But yes, I have acted like I peed my pants. And, and went to a security guard and was like, I had an accident at the property. Like, and he immediately let me into the private area so I could get in the restroom and say face and stuff. You know, I was very thoughtful for that. Uh, he was not thoughtful after he realized all the other stuff that I did once he left me unattended. Uh, but still, yes, it's crazy. But is it really crazy if it works? Yes, but it worked. Uh, and so just remember, it's like, if you do find a way in, if I do find a way in, and trust me, I usually do, uh, I love the picture on the right, it's my favorite, because I can't do this stuff anymore, but that's me climbing seven stories above Nicosia Cypress, uh, coming out of a window that was like a straight drop down, going around to an air vent that was going this way when it should have gone this way, and climbing up over it and bypassing all the surveillance cameras to show that I could get into their server room on the roof, because they, they didn't think anybody would get in from that way, and so that's why they had glass windows with just, you know, drywall protecting it. Uh, and when I got to the top, I mean, the guy who said I couldn't do it, who was holding my jacket, take the picture. Um, but yeah, I will find a way in. So make sure your employees know how to respond once I'm there. Now, let's end it with the final myth and one of the biggest myths. Security awareness in its current form is working. Total, total BS. You know why? We suck at doing security awareness. Why are we trying to teach our users all these little nine-point little things so they can do their internet web-only, you know, 10-question thing every six months and multiple choice and go, can client. But that's not working. How many people in your company realize that one of their job responsibilities is to protect the equipment that they are given? Oh, I've never heard it said like that, Jason. You should have. Because that's what it is. An employee will do everything that is required for them to stay employed and successfully feed and clothe themselves and their, their partners and their family. Not an iota less or more. More. It's like a lot less. It's like not an iota more. Okay. And that's the problem. Information security is making security like it's an add-on. Like it's something that's an afterthought or something that they don't really have to worry about. If you have a company that uses an employee's delivery drivers, on the first day of their job, you give them the car keys and go, we hired you. You know what you're doing. Here's the keys. Have fun. Here's your wrap. No, mother, they got a $60,000 piece of equipment in their control. They've got liability to the public. You're making sure they know that they have to use the turn signals. You're making sure that they know that there's a safety belt that has to be used at all times. Mother, you've got their number on the back of their van knowing that they're going to get knocked out as soon as they make a wrong turn somewhere. You've got them understanding. And if they get in a traffic accident, it's like, are they getting a slap on the wrist while that van is getting bumped out and giving a new van? Oh, no. <laughs> if they wrecked that van three times and total it, are they still employed in your company? I doubt it. But we give 
our employees a piece of equipment and just go knock yourself out. They get to make a mistake on that equipment and jeopardize the security of the company. You're like, oh, okay, we're going to have to restage this. It's like, that, don't do this next time. But if you're that worried about a $60,000 piece of equipment, why aren't you worried about a person clicking on an email and costing you $350 million? I'm looking at you, Terry. It's like, why not? That's costing you $350 million. That's a lot of vans. I mean, I'm not good at math, but that's a lot. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do it. It's like, yeah, it's like, but that's the equipment. That laptop is the equipment that they're responsible for securing, that they're responsible for taking care of it. The only problem is not that they don't want to do it, is that you haven't shown them that that's one of their responsibilities. Huh? Check the H-Bands. I can't hear you. Check the H-Bands. Check the H-Bands? Check the H-Bands. Check the H-Bands. Oh, okay. It's like, it's like, kind of show me up my bad masculine, huh? Meet the H-Bands. It's like, I can't that throw off the, my head or his head. There we go. So there we go. So, but seriously, if you start showing them from the first day that they're employed that that's part of their responsibility, they're not going to like it, but they're going to do it. Just like they know not to go to, uh, you know, certain bad places on the internet while they're on the company equipment, they'll know not to click on unsuspicious links or go to unsuspecting websites that they're not familiar with because that's also the policy that's also enforced because we need to educate our employees not on the do's and don'ts of spearfishing or surfing. We need to educate them on the fact that one of their roles is that they're a member of the security team. They are part of information security. They're not above it or beneath it or beside. They are a part of the team. And you better effing start treating them like they're part of your team. They are not a liability. They're the best human. But here, you're going to go through another 30 minute class on information security, on the policies and practices, and how you can be better aware of how these phishing attacks happen and how to be more cautious with them. They do it again for the second time. You're going, okay, we're going to write this one up. You're now in a separate group where all your emails are being quarantined and you have to whitelist all the emails you want for the next six months. So you can understand what kind of emails are coming into your environment and which ones you need to, to, to be clear of. That sucks, yeah. So does losing $350 million, okay? On the third time, bye. See you later. It's like, I'm not going to let, because I'm not going to let you consistently jeopardize my employment and all your coworkers' employment because you like to click willy-nilly. And also, you need to interact with your employees when things aren't on fire. When I used to work on a gang task force, I met everybody on the worst possible day of their life. Something horrible happened to them, and I show up. I show up. Something horrible is about to happen to them. It's always the worst possible day. It's like, not much has changed, actually, now on your curve. Still, it doesn't matter. So, yes. It's like, so you need, as an information security professor, you need to make sure that you're communicating with uh, your employees. Telling them, hey, there's a new I uh, iOS update. You know, it's a bit it's got a lot of security features. Hey, there's a new emoji set too, but you need to do an update on your iPhone. Oh, there's a new a, a warning out to make sure your, your systems are updated. Hey, we're going to do a lunch and learn about how to protect your kids online, you know, with uh, the different social medias and how to check the privacy settings on the Snapchats and the TikToks and the, the whatever things out there now. You know, it's like we're going to show you how to do those things. We're going to be accessible to you. Because we're not there to make look like you're doing something bad. We're there to help you stay employed and protect the company. When you approach it like that, like they're part of the team and you're there to help them instead of looking for them when they do something wrong, this is going to freak you out. 
but they start talking to you. I know I hate social contact too, but it's like, but it's but you do it for the public good. You know, you're doing it for the, for the good of the team. It's like you need to interact and be positive with them. Whew. I think I'm lying. I'm done. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Um, so, around creating awareness that every employee and. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold that one. I'm I sure speak you can really loud if yeah. necessary. Okay. <laughs> um, right. So, obviously, you're trying to encourage that every person has a sense of awareness so that when anything feels off, they respond. So, yes. raise that, flag it. But a lot of the new approaches completely obfuscate what things should set us off. Right. Companies are using Intune, they're pushing updates. You, all of the security things happen behind a system that you have no awareness of. Right. What do you think of that? Is, that? is that good for us? Is it bad? What's the balance? I think one of the things is we need to learn how to not talk to users. We are very good at explaining to people very technical things and a way more technical, complicated thing than is necessary. It's like you want to get someone interested in how they need to, why they need to be uh, secured with their vehicles. How many people here don't lock their cars because it's such a safe neighborhood, right? Uh, exactly. Exactly. And so you explain to them. Do you keep your car in lock when you go to the grocery store because you're only going to be there for five minutes? No. So why do you not lock your workstation when you're going to be gone from it? It's like, do you allow every person that wants to stop you on the street and try to sell you something or talk to you? Do you engage with every single one of those people? Not hardly. It's like, so why are you doing that when they send you emails? It's like, Equated the ways that they can relate to and they can understand. It's not their job to understand you. It is your job to say it in ways that they can understand and that they can be useful. It's like make you talking tech and talking, you know, really sounding smart helps no one if they can't get anything from it. It's like all you did was waste their time. It's like, so we need to be able to communicate with them and not just show them like why it's technically sound. We show them, hey, this is why we're doing this stuff because this is just basic security. You're not going to leave your stuff out on, on the street. You're not going to leave your stuff unsecured. Why do you do that to the equipment? Why would you do that to your computer? It's like, so we need to show them that way and learn how to communicate with them better. It's like, it's not on them uh, to learn it. It's to us. To communicate it better. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, by the way, I'm not really screaming at you. It's like I know this. I get very crazy. I'm like, who do you know? No. Trust me, I'm screaming at everybody here. Like, Information security. It's like it's a, it's a group group session. Uh, Jason, um, just thank you for the talk. Uh, it's actually good to see the the footage of the year. It's what it did. Put everything nicely together. Uh, from your experience, uh, do you think it's a good idea to incentivize employees? Uh, oh my God, yes. It's like, uh, that's a whole other talk. It's like, it actually not working. But uh, it's called gamification. And that is priceless. This one thing that you can take away right now that, that you should be doing is going to your management and saying, I want, you know, 2,000 Rand. It's like, or 5,000 Rand every quarter to give away and a gift card or some kind of gift card saying, I want to be able to give $5,000 or a 5,000 grand away every quarter. And then what you do is you have a raffle system. You found a suspicious email, you get a ticket to the raffle. Not like a physical, but you get like entry to the, to the raffle. It's like, hey, you block someone from walking in because they didn't have a badge and took them security and reported, you just got 20 entries right there. You reported a, a phishing email that turned out to be an actual phishing email or a test. Well, you just got 20 raffle tickets to get inside. 
Your cost is always going to be the same, 5,000 Rand. But I guarantee you the participation is going to increase every quarter. Because trust me, there will be people going like, yeah, I don't really care about security. I don't want 5,000 Rand. <laughs> there was a lady in the United States who reported a suspicious email from a coworker. And she was like, 20 minutes later, security's at her desk. And they're like, why did you report this? Why do you think it was suspicious? She thinks she's like told him to bust, right? She's freaking out. I'm like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. It's like, but tomorrow is the deadline. And it's like, I didn't have any entries. And it's like, <laughs> and he never usually sends me emails. And it's like, and he's not supposed to. It's like, I just never got it. So I thought, maybe this would qualify. Am, am I in trouble or something? His machine had been compromised for over three weeks. They were doing a pivot attack and trying to do a pivot escalation into the network further. And she stopped that. Uh, she won the raffle. Yeah. 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 In case you're wondering, it's like they didn't do a drawing that quarter. It was hers. It's like, and it was not because she was being security conscious, but she knew what to look for because there was something in it for her. Do a game for your employees. You have a problem where employees aren't actually checking badges when they're going in? Have a game called Where's Waldo every quarter. What that means is you grab a, an employee random and you take them in and you tell them, here's your badge. It's got the same controls. It's got your same name. But instead of your picture on there, it's Waldo. And then they have to use it and just stay cool and just use it there. And whoever stops them and spots Waldo gets money. And if they go the whole quarter without getting caught, they get the money. So that way you don't have them colluding with employees trying to get That's how you do it. It's like you're literally social engineering your employees to be better at protecting against social engineering. It's like, Trust me, it works. It's like, so yeah, that's what that's about. So gamification is a perfect thing to do. It's like, make it a positive experience instead of just like a quarterly, you know, multiple choice question. It's like, that is boring AF and that you can usually back out of and like take the quiz again. Like, oh, I passed, yay. Any other questions? Everybody wants to get out of here, and I totally agree. Uh, one more person, and then I'm gonna go out of the murk. Oh my God, I am like extremely late. I apologize in the I mean, I'm always late on this because I just talk too much. But last one, and then y'all can go get prizes and drinks and stuff because I'm the mother that's keeping you from uh, In your tests, have you ever used a ladder to get into an area you're not supposed to? Uh, have I ever used a ladder? Um, in that one picture, which was really cool, is I actually used the, uh, there we go. I used the anti ladder uh, cage around the ladder to climb up uh, on the building. <laughs> I found a, a pallet right by the dumpster, I'm very familiar with dumpsters, uh, and it's like, you know, so I dragged it over, used that as the first part of the ladder, and then I jumped up onto the outer ring of the anti-climbing ladder device thing, and then I just used that and the brackets that was into the wall as my ladder to climb all the way up. Money well spent. Uh, so uh, I've never really used an actual ladder ladder uh, that I brought with me because I'm cheap and it's like they're heavy and they'll probably still when they on site. Uh, so look up in 2017 Super Bowl, three teams with a ladder, and you'll see three teenagers, 5,000 uh, law enforcement officers, Secret Service, National Guard at the Super Bowl in Houston because the vice president was in attendance and three teenagers found a hole in the link of uh, fence, got in, found the ladder, and they all had the brilliant idea, like, let's all carry the ladder together and see where they, they got everywhere. They got into, like, on the, on the near the field. They got into the little uh, bunker. I don't do sports ball. The bunker area where the players go. It's like locker room. It's like uh, they got into the stands. They got to meet Guy Ferrari, so you get punishment, I guess. It's like they got to meet all the stuff, and all because they were holding it as a matter. And they YouTube it. So you can actually watch how they do it. So don't tell me this takes skill or this takes some kind of like, you know, gate. I hate gatekeeping where hackers at the gate jump the fence. Go under the fence. Go around the fence. I'm not the one telling you how to do it. Just do it. 
So that's how you got to realize it's not that hard because you're going against human nature and human nature is easy to manipulate once you realize what the, the rules are. Okay, now I'm done. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.